today. AMD has completed their RDNA 3 lineup. New GPU competitor gave a big update. Intel's 14th gen is dead on arrival and horrible news for NVIDIA GPU owners. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, with the release of AMD's RX 7800 XT and 7700 XT GPUs, the company finally has a full lineup of parts to better compete with NVIDIA's 4000 series. And of course, if you haven't seen my video on that release, make sure to check it out here. Also, I'll have affiliate links to those down in the description below for when they're released. Either way, in a new video of the event from AMD, the company's own Scott Herkelman said something pretty interesting. You've launched a 7700 and a 7800 XT. Yes. Is that going to complete the RDNA 3 portfolio, or is there maybe more on the horizon? <laughs> uh, well, the RDNA 3 portfolio is now complete. So uh, of all the products that we have planned to launch, uh, that is, this is the, the last few products that we will launch. So yeah, the 7800XC and 7700XC are set to complete their RDNA 3 lineup. With that said, he alluded to a potential for refresh products here. We may have some different versions. Um, but they're not, not, not a new ASIC, if you will. So basically, while this is technically the end of their RDNA 3 products, they could release some faster variants, like a 7950 XT, 7850 XT, etc. Of course, that would likely depend on what NVIDIA does from here and whether they release anything new that AMD is forced to counter. Next up for today, the brand new player in the GPU market. Think not AMD, Nvidia, or Intel. Just announced something big about their newest gaming GPU. But first, as gamers, we talk a lot about leveling up in games. But when you want to level up your brain, there's only one place I recommend with today's sponsor. Brilliant! They're the place I go when I want to learn pretty much anything in the STEM field. Because they were literally made for it. And what do you know? No one teaches it better. I've actually learned some pretty deep stuff about memory, neural networks, and more. But Brilliant doesn't just have a ton of courses. It's really about how they teach you. They use these really fun puzzles that give you engaged and doing the problems yourself. See, it's more than just visual learning, it's learning by doing. And Brilliant is amazing at this. But don't take my word for it, because when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld right now, you'll get a 30-day free trial. So there's really no reason not to at least give them a try. I love them, and I know you will too. And when you're ready for more, and you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you'll get 20% off the annual premium. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash Gamer Melt. Now back to the story. For those who don't know, the Chinese company More Threads released their main GPU, the MTT S80, not too long ago. Gamers Nexus actually got a chance to test it out. And while it's definitely not much to write home about, it's at least a start. One of the biggest issues was its lack of support for DirectX 11. And if you know anything about APIs, a lot of games use DX11. Well, it looks like the company's been hard at work optimizing the GPU, as they just released a driver that adds full support for DirectX 11. Of course, they're still pretty far behind given DX12 has been out for years at this point, along with the updated DX12 Ultimate. But as always, you have to start somewhere. And of course, any and all competition in this space is welcome. Hopefully they can drive Nvidia, AMD, and Intel to up their game. But of course, time, as always, will tell. Next up, I have some terrible news for Intel's upcoming 14th gen desktop CPUs. For those who don't know, Intel's next gen parts are set to come this year, and because we're getting so close to the release, some big leaks are happening. Starting things off, we have a new tweet from the well-known leaker Momomo underscore US, who shared the first retailer listing of the upcoming parts. This confirms the naming scheme to be the 14th gen with the same Core i5, i7, and i9 models we see every release. Don't forget that we likely won't be seeing Intel's new naming scheme on desktop until next gen. Either way, there isn't any pricing listed here, but in a follow-up tweet from Mamama underscore US, he does reveal pricing. Here, you can see that 14th gen is set to get a pretty big price increase. In fact, across the board, we're looking at around 15% give or take. What's wild about this is that 14th gen is nothing but a refresh. If you've been following this channel, you know that the Raptor Lake refresh is essentially 
essentially just a clock boost in everything but the i7 parts, which do get a boost in cores. But overall, we're looking at maybe a 5% performance boost in all the other parts, if that. So a 15% price increase for a measly 5% performance boost is just sad. I don't know if Intel thinks they're living in pre-Ryzen days or what, but if this doesn't change before release, Intel's 14th gen could be dead on arrival. And lastly for today, I recently covered a story that seemed to prove DLSS was not supported in the highly anticipated game, Starfield. In it, a user went through Starfield's code and it didn't make any mention of DLSS anywhere. Now, as I said in that video, there's a chance that they added in a day one update or something like that, but it's been a worry because nearly every AMD sponsored game doesn't include support for DLSS. And that made people think that AMD was holding developers back from getting DLSS support. Well, in a new interview with The Verge, AMD's gaming chief, Frank Azor, discussed this exact topic. And while the article is ultimately good news, I'd argue it's actually really bad for NVIDIA owners. Starting things off, Frank Azor does claim that, quote, if they want to do DLSS, they have AMD's full support. But he later states that when a publisher does bundle their game with a new GPU, AMD expects them to prioritize AMD features in return. Quote, when we do bundles, we ask them, are you willing to prioritize FSR. Basically, AMD doesn't force their partners to use FSR. At any time, they can use DLSS as well, but they have to at least prioritize FSR, meaning if DLSS is supported, FSR would as well. And that's certainly reasonable. It's likely what NVIDIA does as well. But after thinking about this, it makes sense why NVIDIA-sponsored games include FSR, while AMD-sponsored games don't include DLSS. Unlike DLSS, FSR is supported in both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, as well as consoles, so a single upscaling tech can work for everyone. And sure, you can make the argument that DLSS is better than FSR, but when developers need to use FSR first, it's likely not worth the small benefit of DLSS to include support. On the other hand, when NVIDIA is sponsoring a game, developers still need to implement FSR because consoles will need it, not to mention AMD GPU owners. Basically, AMD looks to have made the smart move in supporting a ton of different GPUs, and it could ultimately hurt NVIDIA in the long run, but this also means that while Starfield can add DLSS, they may never have a good enough reason to do it. And with AMD finally adding frame generation, more and more developers could forego adding DLSS support to their game, even if they aren't sponsored by AMD. So while that does it for today, what do you think about the whole issue with DLSS and FSR? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!